It's the same old story in this tried world. We go back and forth. We go back and forth. Oh, 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 we go back and forth. Hello, and today we're doing Premier League predictions for match day number first. No, twenty-five. That's the one. And we are doing some score predictions, and we're going to look back at how we did last week. All that jibber jabber and uh, get into the games this week. So uh, it's going to be an interesting one. That was the song of the week, Back and Forth by Becky Hill, I do believe. And the colour of the week is going to be white. The theme of the week, I'm thinking, is going to be a little bit of... Drum roll, please. It's going to be... Dandelions. Blow your wishes away. All right, so let's get into these predictions. Um, but before we do, we're going to look back at last week. Um, and I do need to just check quickly the predictions league because uh, I've got to be honest, I've, I've not caught up with it. So um, going into game week 24, it was the standings of 466 for me in first position, 409 for Douglas in second, and in third, Jack with 37. In fourth, Nathan with 20. And now just quickly looking at how we did last week. Let's open up the uh, the predictions and let's check out how we all did. So there's just one person that commented on the last one and that was Douglas. So well done, Douglas. Um, and you actually did correctly predict a, a Liverpool defeat. Um, your, your own team there losing in a bit of a terrible style uh, with those mistakes from Quebec and Allison, but it was 2-1 you predicted, so there's a correct result there. You got another correct result in the Burnley game, so you're on to six points. Um, you got a nice correct result in the Man City game, um, so that's another three points, nine. Uh, the Villa game was not the right uh, correct result. Southampton was not, so still on nine. Uh, Man United not winning, still on nine. Arsenal getting a 4-2 win, you're on to 12. Everton losing, uh, still on 12. West Ham winning, that will be on to 15. Chelsea winning, that will be on to 18. Burnley not winning, so still on 18. And finally, Man City winning, you're on to 21 for the week. Pretty good stuff. And that puts you at an overall score total of, it is 400 and 30 points which is nowhere near I'm afraid Douglas nowhere near my overall score because right now in the predictions I am sitting on a very tidy score and that score is actually I'm not sure uh, I've, I've, I've lost the score okay not ideal stuff people not ideal stuff we will find it in a second um, but I do not know where it's gone so that's a bit of a shame but we're just going to... Oh, here it is. Here it is. Right. So, yeah, we were on 466 before this week. We're now on uh, a very decent score of... So, we scored... We got a correct uh, result in the Burn, Burnley win. Correct result in the Sheffield loss. The Man City win. The Chelsea win. I haven't actually calculated it yet. So, just bear with me, people, whilst I do that. Um, but basically we got three and then six, nine, 12, 15. Yeah, we got 15 points and then we got the three, one, uh, we said four, one for Man City. So we actually ended on 18 points. Don't mind it at all. Do not mind it. So 18 means that after this week, I'm now on an overall, uh, total points. Quite decent to be fair. Um, it is going to be. 484. Love that. All right. So that's how the table is looking right now. 484 for me, 430 for Douglas. But let's get into this week. Uh, it's going to be a big week for sure. Um, and we start off with it to be a game between Wolverhampton Wanderers and Leeds United. Now, this could be an exciting one. Um, it's the double game week. It is going to be uh, interesting. It's eight o'clock uh, game, um, and it's on BT Sport. And Wolves do host Leeds in this one. The home side could go above Leeds uh, with a win, 
whereas a win for Leeds will take them five points off the top six. What a season they've had. Um, absolutely brilliant. Um, but I don't really know, to be honest. I'm going to go for a Leeds United victory um, just because I think their style of football has been brilliant this season. You know, Marcelo Bielsa, what an uh, attractive, uh, you know, style of football he plays. And generally, I think that Bielsa, we know with him that, you know, he's a great character in general. Uh, the way he's getting his his uh, helper to translate everything he's saying and just has a passion for the game. And I think he's going to have a passion for this one. He's going to want his side to really kick off the weekend in style um, at Molyneux. And I think that they will do that indeed. So I'm going to say it's going to be Wolves nil, Leeds United 2. Um, and who do I say that will score in this game? I think, first of all, Patrick Bamford. And then, let's go for Rafinha. OK, the next game to predict is going to be between the sides that are, first of all, uh, Southampton and then Chelsea. Interesting one, uh, once again. We shall see how this one goes. But I feel like this might be a shock. Um, and the reason I'm going for that is that Chelsea defensively, yeah, they've improved under Tuchel and Timo Werner's been uh, a little bit better under Tuchel, but they're still not where they should be, Chelsea. And I feel like this game could give them a little bit of a banana peel. Um, it's a tough game for Chelsea, and therefore they may have to settle and take a draw. So I'm saying Southampton 2, Chelsea 2. And goal scorers in this one, I think the first one will be through Danny Ings. Um, then the second one will be through, let's say, it will be uh, it's a tough one. I'm going to say the defender, that's Antonio Rudiger. And then Southampton go back ahead through, let's say, James Ward-Prowse. And then Chelsea once again equalise. And this time it will be via a goal from the winger, Callum. Hudson Adoy. All right, now we've got a game between Burnley and West Brom at Turf Moor, and I think West Brom fans are getting pretty frustrated uh, every week that their side just can't score that many goals. But they did get a good point against Manchester United, and the likes of Diagne could be a big threat. Uh, and by Diagne, the January uh, acquisition, and he looks like he's you know got the hunger, got the desire to score goals. Will he be the answer to keep them up? Well, it's a tough, tall order for Sam Allardyce to do the miracle and get them back up and safe gets you know safety for the season. But I think Burnley will make it tough. They always seem to at Turf Moor. Uh, Turf Moor, happy place. And I think that Ben Mee will be back with a bang here. Uh, he's back from his injury uh, due to him, you know, basically adhering to the concussion protocols. He was perfectly fine. Um, but he's back for this game. And I think he's going to get the winner with a bullet header past uh, Sam Johnston. Burnley 1, West Brom 0. Then it's Liverpool versus Everton. The Merseyside derby. What a game. And it's actually, surprisingly, not uh, a game on Sunday. Usually they have the Super Sunday matches uh, that are really high quality on, on, on Sky. But it's going to be a 5.30 kickoff instead. It is on Sky. Sky Sports Premier League, and there's only one mile between Anfield and Goodison Park. So it's no surprise that Liverpool and Everton are such massive rivals. They do hate each other. And Dominic Calvert-Lewin scored a dramatic equaliser for the Toffees in the reverse fixture in October. Um, but the four-goal thriller was obviously marred by a serious injury for Virgil van Dijk. And Liverpool have not really recovered since. Um, and also a late red card for the... Naughty Brazilian, Richarlison. Now, do I think that Calvert-Lewin can score in this game? Probably not, because he's just got injured. I mean, chances are he'll be a bit rusty. And chances are Salah will score in this game, because he's a big game player. But we're going to say in this one, it'll be Liverpool 3, Everton 0. And goal scorers, Mohamed Salah. And then we will say there will be a goal for defender that is, of course, who is it? It's the new signing, Kabak. And then the third goal for the Reds, I reckon, will be scored by none other than the winger, Sadio Mane. All right, now we've got a game between Fulham 
and Sheffield United is a big game at the bottom of the table. Simply must be a win for both teams. And you feel with this one, it's you know it's an eight o'clock kickoff Saturday night. Not exactly amazing entertainment, but it's so so important, um, and it is going to be on Sky Sports. With Fulham, they tend to play nice football, but they need the final product. They need someone to score them goals. Bobby Decker or Dover Reed could be that man, but we just don't know. Sheffield United have started to get a bit more of a uh, upturn in form, a bit of a resurgence uh, to say. And I think that ultimately, Sheffield United will give it a puff, even if they can, um, sorry, not if they can, even if they do, um, do struggle to, or at least fail to, um, not get basically promoted, and um, not get safety, they probably will have a good go of it, and they might, maybe they won't um, stay up, but we don't know. It's these kind of games that really does define that, so... And be interesting to watch. But I'm going to go for a Sheffield United win, um, surprisingly. I think they've just started to get a bit more belief in that team. Um, Chris Wilder, fair play to the Sheffield United board for keeping him on. Because a lot of managers would have seen him gone. Um, but ultimately, yeah, uh, he stayed. And he might, maybe, just do something special. So I'll say Fulham 1, Sheffield United 2. With goals in the game, first of all, by, let's say... Hmm, I don't know. We'll say Caballero. And then the second goal in the game is scored by Billy Sharp. What a talisman he is. If anyone can drag them out of it, it's him. And then the winner for the Blades, I predict to be scored by John Lundstrom. All right, now we've got a game between West Ham United and Spurs. It's a nice London derby. And talking of derby, I actually did talk about dandelions, but I've completely mugged you off because that is not the theme of the week the theme of the week is derby weekend rivalries resumes because there's the merseyside derby and a london derby and the m23 derby so that's the theme of the week the color we're actually going to stick with white and we know what the song is so yeah and um, with this game it's going to be interesting at the london stadium i've just got a feeling something crazy is going to happen here and spurs are going to lose, all right? I'm putting it out there because West Ham have been brilliant this season. Defensively, they've been quite good and they could struggle against Spurs, who we know can be dangerous on the break. But I just feel West Ham could see a very nice game in, in this match and uh, see this game out. So West Ham 3, Spurs 2. It's a bold one, but it's what I'm going to say. So goals in this game, I think, will be from Declan Rice. Then Spurs equalise and that will be through... Eric Dyer, and then West Ham go ahead again through Jesse Lingard, Jay Lings, water baller. Is it that? Yeah, I think it's that. Um, and uh, then Spurs equalise again um, to really show they are not uh, going down easy. And that goal will be scored by the midfielder that is Musa Sizoko. And if he's not fit to play, then it will be, in my opinion, Instead, Pierre-Emil Huybierg. And then the equaliser, that was the equaliser, the winner for Spurs. Actually, no, I'm joking. It's the winner for West Ham. Of course it is. No, the winner for West Ham, I reckon, will be forward that is known by the name. No, I'm joking. They haven't got any forwards apart from Antonio, who might not play. But to be fair, Antonio always scores against Spurs. But the point is, I don't think he'll score this time. Instead, it will be Jared Bowen. All right, now we've got a game between Villa and Leicester. Leicester City take on Aston Villa. Interesting one, it's got to be said. But for this game, I've got a feeling that the villains will do enough. They haven't, inverted commas, got Jack Grealish. Who even knows? So many rumours. Nothing is proved to be true, so we don't know. But I think either one of Barkley or Grealish will definitely score. And Barkley is who I'm going to go for at the minute. But it could be Grealish if he plays. Um, and then Leicester will equalise, I reckon, through, let's say, Tielemans. And then Villa, once again, go ahead. And this time, it's through the absolute legend that is Ollie Watkins. All right, now we've got a game up between the likes of Arsenal and Manchester City. Now, interestingly enough, Arsenal have been spanked a lot in the past against Man City. Could it happen again? Possibly. Man City have been absolutely brilliant. 
They're going to want the title and they're going to keep on wanting their good run of form. Now, in this game, I'm going to predict Arsenal 1, Manchester City 3. But it could swing it either way, to be honest, because, you know, Aubameyang, he's a bit inconsistent, but on his day, he could get a brace, you know. So Liverpool versus Everton is not the only massive game going on this weekend. This is obviously a top six clash. And Mikel Arteta is set to come up against his former mentor, Pep Guardiola. So it's kind of like, you know, apprentice versus um, teacher or whatever you call it. The point is, um, yeah, it's uh, against his former team. And the Gunners have a terrible recent record against the Citizens, especially at the Emirates. Though they have lost nine of their last ten in all competitions. But they did win, don't forget, that last year's FA Cup semi-final clash. This one's at the Emirates, and I think it's going to be in the citizens' favour. Arsenal 1, Manchester City 3, for City to get their 8th Premier League win in a row versus the Gunners. And goal scorers in the game, first of all, Kevin De Bruyne. I know, he's back from injury, and I think he will score. And then we will say a goal for Arsenal. This time it's scored by the wing wizard, the absolute teenage sensation, Bukayo Saka. And then Man City hit back with goals of their own from Ruben Diaz. And then the third for Manchester City will be scored by none other than... Who is it? It is Ilkay Gundogan. There's talk he might not play, but I think he will. All right, let's move on to the next one, which is going to be Manchester United against Newcastle. Now, a tough one for the Magpies here. I think that... Scott McTominay is probably going to probably gonna miss out because there's talk of him being injured. So that will be a blow for the Red Devils. But the Red Devils probably don't need to worry because they've won their last two games against Newcastle. Or is it against Newcastle? Or maybe it's just in all competitions um, in general, in the Premier League, or I don't know. But 8-2 is the aggregate, apparently. And Man United-Newcastle is one of those classic Premier League fixtures. Usually has goals in it. Um, more often than not. And I'm going to say it is the case here. Man United 3, Newcastle 0. With the goals from Luke Shaw, Bruno Fernandes. And finally, it's going to be a net ripper from the player that goes by the name. Who is it? It is going to be the man that is called... Oh, Tony Marshall. That's right, the forward. Martial does it again. All right, now it's Brighton versus Palace. Tough game to predict on Monday Night Football because Palace, they can be unpredictable, but without Zaha, you feel as though they're in trouble. Brighton have been defensively really solid uh, as of late, and I think they will keep it going here. So Brighton 1, Crystal Palace 0, with the only goal coming from Neil Morpai. And finally, we have Leeds versus Southampton. The Tuesday night game at 6 o'clock, Sky Sports. Don't miss it and ultimately these are two very attacking teams we know that both of them can defensively be a bit of a nightmare especially Southampton nine goals against Manchester United and losing to Newcastle was a real blow um, and they lost again against Wolves but I just feel Southampton going forward they might be able to outscore themselves and Leeds they can be risky they will get the win I reckon against Wolves but will they get the win against Southampton? That is the question. I'm saying Southampton to win this by nil goals to three. I know. And the goals here will come through Takumi Minamino. And then it will be through the absolute legend that is Danny Ings. And then the third goal for Southampton, I reckon, will come this time from... Oh, let's go for the absolute wing wizard that is... Actually, no, not the wing wizard. Let's say the midfielder, it's Armstrong. It's Stuart Armstrong. And that wraps up my predictions for match day number 30. Oh, I keep saying that. 25 of the Premier League. Get your head together. But I hope you have enjoyed. Smash a like on the video for more Premier League, FPL, you know, championship, everything content. And I shall see you in the next one. Um, hopefully we can get some correct scores in there. Three points for the correct result. Five for the result and the goal difference. And eight for the correct scoreline. But it is, of course, Derby weekend. Let's get those rivalries and let's get some points and squeeze them out of the juicy matches. Hope you enjoy. I'll see you next time.